Hi there, good noon and welcome to Baiju's exam prep channel dedicated to your success as an MBA aspirant. My name is Vikrant and I am your personal coach for all things related to language, English and communication skills. Additionally, I also talk about sorting out the mental aspects of the preparation. Uh, if you are new to our channel, don't forget to press the subscribe button and uh, do give a look over to the bell icon as well so that you start receiving the notifications whenever we go live. So as usual, if you happen to have any questions during this session, feel more than free to drop it down in the chat window and I can help you with that straight away. Now that we are less than 50 days away from the exam, I can legitimately say that we are entering the home stretch. The extremely important time where we need to ensure that we continue maintaining that immense focus that we have maintained throughout. Okay. Good noon, Virender. How are you doing? <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead and talk about the particular topic that we have today. And this topic focuses on something called skimming techniques now in my classes i cover it but cover it in an indirect manner but here is a session where i'll actually use the term i i i generally do not like really introducing unnecessary jargon and uh, therefore that is something that uh, th th therefore you may not hear me using terms a lot uh, terms like skimming skipping scanning but rest assured everything is taught to you and before i start let us ponder over a really nice thought that I found. So there is a vitality, a life force, an energy, a quickening that is translated through you into action. So you have that ability, that life force that can convert a thought and idea that you have conceived into action. And because you are unique, that expression is also unique. And the sad thing is that if you do not work, then that uniqueness that you could have brought to the world through your action also misses out. So I am sure you will not deprive the world of your uniqueness expressed through your actions. And if you can continue doing that in the direction of the CAT exam for the next 50 odd days, I am sure you would be able to get something really amazing. Kush, some sources for practicing VA and RC. Uh, Kush, we keep on taking a lot of sessions here on the channel. Yeah? You can uh, give those a look over. So you remember a few months ago, I started this series of 500 most important VA RC questions. You can look at that. And then uh, uh, quite a while ago, I actually took a series of uh, series called the 100 most important VRC questions last year as well. I'm not repeating those questions. So you can check that out as well as attending things here. Additionally, uh, if you look at our app, we do upload, we keep on uploading uh, fresh practice material there all the time. So all of these different places can work. You can start tapping into previous year papers. And then thereafter, I think it all depends on what it is that you need more help with, more inputs about. So if you do not have accuracy in a particular area, I think your focus should be on how do I get this right instead of just blindly practicing. Okay, so hopefully that should help. So let's go ahead and talk about skimming now. So what do we really mean by skimming? You can put your answer in the chat box down below, but then uh, let me take a slightly tangential path to the right answer. Have you ever heard of something called a skimmed milk? Huh, so just quickly drop in a yes or a no. You've heard of what a skim what skimmed milk is? Hmm. Tell me. Kush, 70% is threshold, that's good. Let's see if we can take it over to 80. Question type by question type. Hmm. So what exactly is skimmed milk? So what you typically do is that you take your regular milk that may come from usually a cow or a buffalo in the world that we live around. 
So, you take this regular milk and take out the fats from it. Remember, oh, malai hata dete na apne. So, what you are left with is skimmed milk and nowadays, nowadays skimmed milk is considered healthy and a lot of health conscious people tend to prefer skimmed milk over the regular milk. But then in the era, in the time that went by, so I am talking about the time when I was young, okay. What, when you take out the fats from a milk, what do you use these fats for? These fats are eventually converted into this something beautiful called ghee or clarified butter. So, when I was growing up, my nani, my maternal grandmother, uh, she used to have uh, three cows at her house. And every winter, she will send a tin of clarified butter that was made at home with an instruction to my mother that the children must have two spoonfuls of this ghee every day. You know, a spoonful in the morning, a spoonful in the evening, raw. Because that was the time when ghee and uh, clarified butter, the fats of the milk were considered the actual power that rested in the milk. Nowadays, of course, we think of that as unhealthy, but then there was a time when it was considered immensely healthy. So, skimmed milk, in a way, is milk, going by the traditional ideology, is milk which has been stripped off the power of ghee, the power of clarified butter. Ah, so, when it, when it comes down to skimming the milk, you take out what is, what packs the power in it. Similarly, when it comes to skimming a passage, it is all about taking out the power of the passage or in other words, it is all about taking out all those ideas that are important in the passage. So, every passage contains some key ideas. These key ideas are uh, further supported by ideas and each one of these supporting ideas may also get elaborated upon. So, skimming is all about taking out the key ideas and then leaving out the rest. And why should we really be doing that? Huh? Why, why should we learn to skim? The reason is uh, pretty straightforward. When you skim, number one, it saves you a lot of time. It saves you time at two different levels. It saves you time while reading the passage. So when we say that we are going to skim, we are essentially focused on taking out all the key ideas. We are not bothered about the details and when you are not bothered about the details, the entire process obviously goes on and become faster. And the second way in which it helps us is while answering the questions. So because you know all the key ideas that are scattered around in the passage, when you read a question, you know which key idea you need to go back to. And therefore, that process of finding out the right part of the passage needed to answer this particular question, well, that process also goes on to become quite rapid, quite fast. And not only that, it also improves your accuracy. And why would it improve your accuracy? So, so there, are, there are some questions, huh? for example, when I talk about a main idea question or when I talk about a tone based question, you need to have that understanding of the entire passage with you in order to zero in on the right answer. So when you learn to skim, when you take out all those key ideas, it becomes easier for you to have that mental overview and therefore your accuracy in these question types improves and then even otherwise. There are these questions, okay? So when we talk about a question that asks you for an inference, 
a question that asks you for uh, which of the following is uh, true or false according to the passage right all of these questions require you to refer to multiple parts of the passage and when you have those key ideas it becomes easier for you to refer to those multiple parts as compared to when you do not skim and therefore i believe it this is one skill that we should definitely go ahead and invest some time some effort on now how do you do that how do we really go ahead and learn to skim faster so one of the things that it involves is conscious skipping so when i say skipping what do you do while reading the passage learn to skip details learn to skip statistics learn to skip examples so that you can just retain focus on the key idea so see there is a certain amount of skipping that anyway happens in our everyday life i'm saying that let's do it a little more consciously and how would you know that something is a detail piece of stat example uh, you can look at the keywords of that sentence you can also be guided by transitional expressions so those things would typically help you a lot additionally uh, think of applying a label to every paragraph okay or as i generally put it think in terms of subheadings right so you have an essay and then there is every paragraph if you were to give a subheading to each one of those paragraphs how would you go about doing that right so that subheading sort of becomes your placeholder for that particular paragraph right and i'll i'll demonstrate it to you with the help of an example pretty soon okay and uh, similarly the last thing that you can do is experiment with reading the first sentence of every paragraph but why the asterisk see this asterisk is number 1 when i say each paragraph i'm saying do not do this for the introduction so read the entire introduction completely and thereafter for every paragraph experiment with reading only the first sentence but then this will work only for academic writing this may not work for each passage and that is why i want you to experiment after a while after you've started this experimentation uh it can develop that instinct for finding out whether the given pas passage is a uh, uh, academic piece of writing or not and if it is an academic piece of writing you can rely on this approach otherwise you can always uh, go with skipping with that said i normally advise that it is a skill if you practice doing it every day eventually you anyway go on to become better in the journey of becoming better you can use some of these pointers to speed up the process but anybody who's putting in that effort along with becoming better at para summary questions because quite a few things that we have talked about here are taught in para summary questions uh, they would generally take care of this so let us go ahead and practice together what i will do is that i'll take you through two passages in the first passage i am going to take a pause and i will ask you for the key idea of every paragraph that you read and even if you are not able to give it a key idea at least give it a subheading and i will share my subheadings my reading of that passage with you so that your approach your process also becomes a little more fine tuned so let's go ahead and read a passage so here is the first one so you notice there are two paragraphs please read both of them and come up with your subheadings and then you and i can swap our subheadings for these two go ahead and tell me what you think
So we've managed to read these. So tell me, what is the subheading for the first paragraph? Let me go first so that I am able to demonstrate it better to you. So when I look at the first paragraph, I am avoiding the detail. So if I were to label it, can I say that this paragraph basically talks about the outcome of the RBI MPC? the outcome of the meeting of the Monetary Policy Committee of RBI. Hmm. Now if I look at, the, look at it in terms of the key idea, I will say that okay, the meeting turned out to be a non-event as repo rate was left unchanged. That is the crux, that is the heart. right? Similarly, when we look at the second paragraph, uh, I think uh, the, the key here, the crux here or the subheading will be there are be no easy answers to macroeconomic policy, though RBI appears justified in its decision. Hmm? So, no easy answers to macroeconomy, though RBI tries and is justified. So, you notice how concisely I am trying to capture it. So, this is the sort of conciseness that we need when it comes to arriving at or forming that placeholder or that subheading. Right? And Saket, where are we coming up with microeconomics? Macro, macro, no micro. Okay, and Rahul, now we are bringing in our GK. Let's go ahead to the next paragraph and then next two paragraphs and then see how you do it. But good attempt, okay? Very good attempt. Zilani, Saket, Prasanna, Rahul. Keep it up. So I am giving you more time so that you are able to come up with that gist. Although for those of you who have been practicing with me for a while are probably already in that habit. But do do share this. Huh? Come on. Do share it. Do share it with me. So, what is the gist now? What is the gist? What is the key idea here? So, when I look at uh, the third paragraph, can I say the third paragraph talks about the reasons behind a central bank tinkering with interest rates, you know, lowering or raising of the interest rates? So, you give me the gist, the key idea of the fourth paragraph. Come on, try to capture it very concisely. It will also help you in para summary questions eventually.
Okay, let me have a go at this one as well. So the fourth paragraph says, whatever. So paragraph third talks about reasons behind a central bank lowering or raising interest rate. Fourth says, uncertainty of information, especially in a country like India, makes that job difficult. You know, the job mentioned in the third paragraph. So looking at that, so you notice, we are, we are just coming up with the key idea. And here is the last paragraph for you. So this time around, I want you to definitely give it a try and then, and then you can compare it with the one that I share. Uh, Sakit, we should not use the word adverse with outcomes because it was not always adverse outcomes, right? Are we done? Shall we go ahead and have a look at it? So what is your key for the fifth paragraph? So if I were to come up with it, I'd say RBI decisions are taken to create feel good factor. And if the uncertainty persists, RBI is likely to do nothing. So we're being slightly, slightly negative towards RBI here in this particular scenario. Right? And with that, let us dive into our questions and you'd know the true value when you look at the questions. So go ahead and uh, give this an answer. Okay, so a lot of us have gone on to share B as our answer to question number one. Now you notice the importance of all of those key ideas. The moment we saw why is it difficult in India to ascertain correct economic information, we knew that we have to go to the fourth paragraph. And if you do go back to the fourth paragraph, you would also notice that B is absolutely the correct answer. So that process of referring become to the passage becomes very fast. Here is the next question. Try it with this one. Now, in this case, you obviously cannot refer to one particular paragraph by going by the question itself. But for each one of these answer choices, you do need to refer to the passage. So let us see how you deal with it.
so what's your take okay now you know how i approached this question which of the following is not true i actually when they ask me which of the following is true or not true i generally try to look at an answer choice that can be termed false on the basis of the passage because it saves me time so have a look at option b the decision to keep the repo rate unchanged was a surprise decision for everyone the very first paragraph tells me that you know the first bi monthly meeting of the rbi's monetary policy committee turned out as many ex expected to be a non event what does that tell you there is not a surprise everybody knew what is going to happen in that so this contradicts the passage it is false so that becomes your answer whereas the other things are actually mentioned so d can come from third paragraph c can come from fourth paragraph and imf's opinion has also been shared in the passage so easy to look at in that sense okay uh, let's go ahead and have a look at the next one what is the central idea this is where a compilation of the key ideas of every paragraph will help you a lot oh some of us have chosen a so let me for the previous question let me just go ahead and answer that too uh, let's just refer to the last paragraph i think i did not give you the right check this imf's bullish projection on india's growth so if imf is bullish on india's growth then imf believes that it india will grow it's optimistic bullish can definitely be thought of as optimistic so that was true according to the passage Okay. So, what is the central idea? Okay. Rahul in how many parag how many paragraphs deal with this particular theme it is hard to ascertain correct economic data of the country exactly one the fourth paragraph now come to think of it if i give d to you as a as an essay topic and i ask you to write an answer around it what will your answer be well, what kind of essay will you write you talk about different types of economic data then you talk about the challenges in getting that economic data and then you would conclude from there that uh, what makes it hard you definitely have multiple paragraphs talking about it whereas in this case i think the passage that you've just read and the essay outline that we could create from option d they are completely different so d is what we will call a narrow answer choice when it comes to a main idea question on the other hand b is a lot better see look at the very first paragraph that's what it talks about rbi has decided not to change anything let's let's just go back let's check so rbi did not change anything and it was expected then general general and look at this so starting here ending here so we are very clearly talking about the approach of rbi or the changes brought about by rbi and that is why b should be a better answer choice than option d and since none of us have chosen a and c i am leaving them out here is question number 4 what is the author's tone in the passage so look at the kind of emotions or the attitude that the author has portrayed towards rbi and then let's work from there so my my typical approach will be i start off by thinking of the author is positive negative or neutral
okay so in this case can i say that the author is mildly negative towards rbi which means that laudatory is gone what is sarcastic when are we sarcastic sarcasm is where you say something biting or seething to somebody you say something hurtful but in an indirect manner you state the opposite of what you want to say but the net result is that it is hurtful to the person it was said to and it is amusing to the rest of the people so sarcastic is also gone now what is the meaning of dogmatic at the end of the day we need to have the tone related vocabulary so <coughs> <coughs> so when you are dogmatic you see you seem to have an opinion where you are not open to discussion about that opinion i should in fact right when where you are not open to discussion about that particular opinion you believe this is right no matter what kind of evidence is presented to you to the contrary you would steadfastly hold on to that belief that opinion uh is the author uh, is that the author's style in this particular case uh have we seen that when we present the author with a contrary point of view he doggedly unreasonably refuses to acknowledge that no and therefore even a can be ruled out and that essentially leaves you with option c Uh, Raul, dogmatic is an un holding on to an unreasonable belief. It's a negative word, but the author's attitude is not exactly negative, right? But the author is mildly negative towards the RBI, and therefore we can definitely use the word critical. Although even that may not be the absolute exact tone, but you know that we are supposed to go ahead and choose the best from the given lot. Okay, so with that. let us dive into our next passage so try to take out the key idea of every paragraph when you reading it and then i'll take you over to the questions ready so here is your second pa second passage just let me know once you've read it and i'll take you over to the next slide have you managed to read it so let me take you over to your next paragraph uh zilani doklam stand off is a part of first paragraph i think the core that we are getting from these two paragraphs is that the passage is going to focus on uh, relationships between india and china if i were to look at or if i were to label the first paragraph i'd say uh the first paragraph is about an overview of india china relations in the recent past 
and the second paragraph gives us uh, long's take on the doklam standoff long i i wouldn't know how to pronounce that second word so shingchun i think but let's not distort it so long take on doklam standoff uh, here is the next one Yeah, absolutely much better om and anjala So done. My key takeaway from this paragraph is uh, things have improved between India and China, but con but contentious issues still remain. So things are improving, but contentious issues, but contentious contentious issues remain. Uh, so it talks about some of those contentious issues, and then here is the next paragraph for you. Okay, so once again, if I were to give a lowdown for this particular paragraph, I'd say that uh, it continues the theme from the previous paragraph where it talks about more issues, and apart from that, it also gives us the details of the Doklam standoff, right? So with that, let me take you over to the next paragraph.
okay so done so what is the crux of this particular paragraph uh, it talks about the three core issues according to long plus india's objection to bri that's what it is a fairly longish paragraph but essentially it talks about these two themes i am deliberately skipping the specifics because if i get into specifics it takes time and it makes it tougher for me to retain everything right so let's dive into the next paragraph Okay, so what is the key, what is the crux of this particular passage, uh, this particular paragraph? Uh, it talks about Indian resolve on Doklam plus rising exports to China, gives you some data. And here is the next one, the last paragraph basically. And then we'll have questions. So we're going a little slow because I am waiting for the formation of the key, key point for every paragraph okay so I, that's that's a relatively more important part for this particular session uh, let me check do we have another session at one today let us see because in that case we'll go ahead a little faster Okay, so once again, my key takeaway from this paragraph is exports increased, exports from India have increased, uh, exports from India to China have increased, but so has uh, the trade deficit that is also increased. And then there is a tiny thought of 2018 looks promising. So with that, let us dive into our questions. So here is question number one based on the passage, technically question number five. Which of the following statements can be correctly inferred from the passage? Go ahead and share your answers with me. ready okay so if i look at this particular 
क्वेश्चन ओके लॉर्ड ऑफ अस हैव गॉन ऑन टू चूज सी ओके माय आंसर इज ए व्हाई एम आई नॉट चूजिंग सी सेकंड सेंस टू अटेंड द एलेवेंथ ब्रिक्स समिट इफ यू गो टू दैट पैराग्राफ एंड लुक एट इट क्लोजली it mentions the 10th bricks summit and not the 11th do you want me to take you back there <laughs> so it was 11th and not uh, it was a 10th and not 11th and therefore second is not true and uh, look at third pro china communist party of nepal had got nothing to do with the doklam stand off and therefore third is also not right and that is why our answer for this question is option a here is the next one which of the following statements is not true with respect to the passage what's your answer okay so my answer to question number 6 is option a so d unlikely that these challenges will be resolved will be solved any sign any time soon this is true we were looking for something that is not true uh where are those three issues mentioned by long should be here it is unlikely that the three interwoven conundrums will be solved in the near future so d is true and uh, look at look at what it is that we were aiming at my bad the power has gone out at my end uh, so d is true and therefore that's not our answer uh a on the other hand is false you can refer to the very first paragraph and you'd find the reference there let me take you back sorry zyada hi peeche chale gaye yaar apan notice this they are vowing to create favorable conditions for development so going by that i'd say that a which says uh, no one is willing to make a move for any favorable condition can very easily be termed false and that is why our answer here should be option a and with that let me take you over to the next question here it is ha ha so kush so it, so that is exactly what the passage also said no that it is unlikely that these three issues will find a res, find find a solution soon and that's exactly what the option d also says it is unlikely that the three challenges will be resolved any time soon and this is exactly say it is unlikely that these will be solved in the near future exact same thing no isme ab aur kya batao bata kuch aur confusion hai to bata i can then pitch in with that seventh
remember the paragraph where BRI was mentioned refer to that and uh, tell me what the answer should be Okay, so absolutely yes, the correct answer is indeed D. So that's what I brought for you today. Don't forget to like the video before you leave. And if you want more practice, join us for a cat marathon tomorrow at 1. So in that marathon, we take you through everything that the cat asks. Okay, we touch upon every single section. We starting at 1 p.m., and we will continue for at least four hours, maybe even longer. So stock up on your tea, coffee, snacks and then tune in at 1 p.m. Besides that, we have started a cat crash course where we give you a lot of, uh, where we take you through a lot of sessions. Uh, make sure that you attend those at 7 p.m. every day. Then uh, the next All India Mock, will the window will open on 27th of October. You can register and practice that too. And for a very comprehensive practice, <coughs> you can enroll for our test series, which <coughs> as you can see, gives you eight, more than 80 mocks and 10,000 plus practice questions actually. Uh, so that can come in very handy. People have gone through it, have gone ahead and ensured that they managed to get great percentiles. So that's it from me today. I look forward to meeting you in my next session together until then stay safe stay focused stay in touch and keep working hard if you need us we are just a message away take care